story in the middle of downtown in a major city. People are going to work, studying for exams, are lost in their thoughts and daily lives. Right here, a nuclear weapon is detonated and time freezes. The first phase of the explosion happens within less than a second. In a millisecond, a ball of plasma hotter than the sun appears and grows in a fireball to more than two kilometers across. Within this ball, everyone is just gone. Think of water dripped onto a very hot pan. A sizzle, and then there's nothing. Most buildings, cars, trees, tacky sculptures, and people, all evaporated. First, the flash, an intense tsunami of light, washes over the city in an instant. If you happen to have your head pointed in the direction of the explosion, it renders you blind for a few hours. The heat of this light produces a thermal pulse, so energetic and hot that it just burns everything as far as 13 kilometers from the detonation site. What this means is that everything in an area of 500 square kilometers that is able to burn starts burning. Plastic, wood, fabric, hair, and skin. If you happen to be in reach of the thermal pulse, one moment you're on your way to work, the next moment you're on fire. Now the second phase begins. It happens in a few seconds. Most people will now first notice that something is wrong, but it's already too late for hundreds of thousands. The flash is followed by the shock wave. The heat and radiation of the fireball create a bubble of superheated and super compressed air around it that's now expanding explosively. Faster than the speed of sound, creating winds stronger than hurricanes and tornadoes. Human infrastructure is no match for its power. Most major buildings within a kilometer of the fireball are just ground up down to their base. Only steel reinforced concrete is able to partially resist the pressure. In the surrounding parks where retirees feed the ducks, trees blackened and smoldering from the heat a second before snap like toothpicks. If you're outside, you get tossed away like a grain of dust in a tornado. The shock wave weakens as it travels outwards, but still about 175 square kilometers of houses collapse like they're made of cards, trapping tens of thousands of people who didn't have any time to react. Gas stations explode and fires spread throughout the rubble. A mushroom cloud made from the remains of the fireball, dust and ash rises kilometers into the sky in the next few minutes and casts a dark shadow over the ruined city. This violently pulls in fresh air surrounding the city, destroying more buildings and providing an abundance of oxygen. It depends on the city what happens next. If there's enough fuel, fires may turn into a firestorm that burns the rubble, everybody trapped in it and people trying to flee the devastation. Up to 21 kilometers from the explosion, people just like you rush to their windows to take pictures of the mushroom cloud, unaware that the shockwave is still coming at them, about to shatter their windows and create a blizzard of sharp glass. The third phase begins in the coming hours and days. We're used to the idea that help will come, no matter the disaster. This time is different. A nuclear explosion is like every natural disaster at once. There are hundreds of thousands or millions of people with serious injuries, lacerations, broken bones, serious burns. In the next few minutes and hours, thousands more will die because of these injuries. Countless people are trapped in collapsed buildings like in earthquakes or blinded by the flash, deaf from the blast wave and unable to flee through streets impassable with rubble and debris. They're terrified, confused and don't know what's happened to them or why. Most likely, many hospitals have been leveled along with all the other buildings, and most medical professionals are either dead or injured along with everyone else. The survivors lucky enough to have been in metro tunnels or standing in the right place to be unburned and unhurt won't have truly escaped harm yet. Depending on the type of weapon, where it explodes, and even the weather, an awful black rain can begin, with radioactive ash and dust descending on the city, covering everything and everyone. The invisible, malicious, silent horror of radiation takes its turn. Every breath carries poison to the lungs of the survivors. Over the coming days, the people who receive the highest doses of radiation exposure will die. There will be no help, not for hours or maybe even days. Civilization doesn't operate when there is a total breakdown of infrastructure. Roads are blocked, train tracks walked, runways cluttered with rubble. No water, no electricity, no communication, no stores to replenish supplies from. 
help from surrounding cities will have a hard time entering the disaster zone, and even if they can, the radioactive contamination will make it risky to get too close. After a nuclear attack, you're on your own. So, bit by bit, people emerge from the rubble, on foot, contaminated with radioactive fallout, carrying what little they may have left. They are slow, in pain, traumatized, and they all need food, water, and medical treatment fast. And the damage done by a nuclear weapon doesn't end when the fires burn out and the smoke clears. The hospitals in the neighboring cities are under-equipped for a disaster of this scale and overwhelmed with tens or hundreds of thousands of patients with serious injuries. In the weeks, months, and years to come, many of those who survived will succumb to cancers like leukemia. The reason no government wants you to think about all this is because there is no serious humanitarian response possible to a nuclear explosion. There's no way to really help the immediate victims of a nuclear attack. This is not a hurricane, wildfire, or earthquake, or nuclear accident. It is all of these things at once, but worse. No nation on Earth is prepared to deal with it. The world has changed in the past few years, with world leaders again explicitly and publicly threatening each other with nuclear weapons. Many experts think the danger of a nuclear strike is higher than it has been in decades. Governments tell their citizens that it's good that we have nuclear weapons, but it's bad when anyone else gets them. That it's somehow necessary to threaten others with mass destruction to keep us safe. But does this make you feel safe? It only takes a small group of people with power to go crazy or rogue, a small misstep or a simple misunderstanding to unleash a catastrophe of unimaginable proportions. Exploding stuff in videos is fun. Exploding things in real life not so much. The shalom, 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 shalom. First, I want to give you the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kakadash. Dabblonis. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all of the righteous Hebrew Israelite brothers out there that are teaching this word in the name of Yahweh, Mahashim, Yahweh Shai. So I think I'm going to pull today's edification. I'm going to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Self explanatory. We're going to call today's edification this, the coming day of the Lord. The coming day of the Lord. So what we just witnessed there, well, I'm not going to say nothing. You tell me the short video, the five, six minute video that you saw, that we just saw, the animation, you tell me if this matches up with the coming day day of the Lord biblical scripture prophecy you tell me so we're going to start in verse 3 second Peter chapter 3 verse 3 it says knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walkers up sorry walking after their own lust and absolutely because when we speak about the coming day of the Lord in its full entirety there are scoffers everywhere everywhere there are scoffers telling us but we don't know what we are talking about. You know, this can never happen and so forth. And, you know, who do you think you are? And, you know, the same old BS that you get from the churches. And this is what I say to you when I say that the churches do not understand the Bible. The churches do not understand the Bible. And you better truly believe this when I'm telling you this. I've said this so many times and I can't say it enough. Your churches do not understand the Bible. So we're in those last days and we are seeing scoffers everywhere, on the keyboard, on the highways and byways, in the mainstream media, in the churches. We are seeing scoffers, they're everywhere, they're everywhere. Everywhere. There are even certain Israelite camps that are preaching incorrect doctrine, which we consider as scoffers as well, when it comes to this truth. But anyway, we're going to stay on focus. We're going to stay on point. We're going to we're going to stay on point about what we just witnessed in that short animation. So it says in saying, <clears throat> verse four, 
and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Because many don't believe, and I've always said this, the Christian church do not believe that our Lord is coming. They do not believe that Yahweh Shai is coming. They truly don't believe. They truly don't believe. <laughs> That's why they're building up their, they're building up their kingdom in this world. And they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as were, as they were, from the beginning of the creation. And we hear that same rhetoric now. And the most common rhetoric we hear amongst, especially those people that call themselves Christians, is that, oh, it's never going to happen in my time. Oh, it's not going to happen in my time. Oh, it's not. So when do they want it to happen? In their children's time? In their grandchildren's time? What, as long as they're not alive when it happens? This is the time it's going to happen. They are in those times now. But everyone wants it to be in some other time, some other generation, not in my generation. It'll be happening in 20, 30 years' time. Another generation, when I'm dead and gone, I hope I'm not here alive when it happens. That's all they ever say. <laughs> they don't want it to happen. They don't, they don't, they, they say, where is the promise? They don't believe that Yahweh Shai is coming, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of the Most High, the power of the heavens, were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world then was being overflowed with water, perish the flood. The world that was back then was overflowed by water, perished. This is referring to now the times of Noah. All right? But the heavens and earth which are now, so the heavens and earth that are now, that we are living in today, by the same word are kept in store. By whose word? By the word of the Most High. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. And what is that fire that the world is reserved for? What is, what is the fire that the Most High has reserved this world for today? The world which is now that we all live in, by the same word are kept in store, it's been kept in store, it's been reserved, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. What is that fire? That fire is the nuclear destruction, the nuclear war that is going to come. World War Three, the war of Armageddon, that's going to be a nuclear, a nuclear war. That's the fire that it's reserved for. That's what that whole animation is about. The animation that we just watched is exactly what Apostle Peter, Disciple Peter, Prophet Peter is telling us it's going to happen in these last days. That's exactly what he's speaking of. Second Peter chapter 3 is speaking about the nuclear destruction. You're going to see as we go through. Well, like I said, you, 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 you tell me. Right? And remember. Anyway. So, the world that we're in now, by the word, by the same word, that's the word of the Most High Yahweh, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, unto fire, against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, we are technically in the third manel, 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 <laughs> I always get that word, tongue twisted. We're technically in the third manelian since our Lord died, since Yahushai died. Alright? The third manelian since he died. So this would be the third day to Yahushai, the third day to the Most High, just so you understand, the third day to the heavens. We're in the third three thousand. We're in the third millennium, but this would be the third day to the Most High, and to Yahweh Shai, and to the angels, and to all of those that are in the heaven of heavens. So, the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward. He's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So he's long-suffering. 
and this is why those days are going to be shortened, right? Is long suffering to us what to who to the elect? The word long suffering be of a long spirit, not to lose heart. So we can't lose heart because the Lord is long suffering, He's not losing heart, He's coming to preserve patiently and bravely in enduring misfortunes and troubles. So this is what we've got to do. We've got to preserve patiently and bravely enduring these misfortunes that we are under. But we have finally woken up to who we truly are, that we are the, the true children of Israel. To be patient in bearing and offenses, the, sorry, to be patient in bearing the offenses and injuries of others. <laughs> to be mild and slow in avenging to be long-suffering, slow to anger, slow to punish, to be long-suffering. Let's get a precept here, right? The Lord said to Prophet Habakkuk said, Habakkuk 2 and 2, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain, and make it plain upon the tables that it, that he may run that readeth it so we're going to go back to the visions in a minute in second peter's chapter 3 for the vision is yet for an appointed time the coming of the day of the lord is for an appointed time only the most high knows when that day is not even yahweh shai knows when that day is part of that vision is the war of armageddon the destruction but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it though it tarry people can't see this war coming this armageddon coming this nuclear war coming though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry it shall surely come isaiah says the same thing right this destruction is coming this war of armageddon is coming this the coming of the day of the lord is coming Isaiah says here in Isaiah 55, verse 10. I should have said the Most High said to, to Isaiah. Yahweh says to Isaiah, the Lord says to Isaiah, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. So, that's part of the destruction. The Lord said it's going to come, it shall not return back to him void. Let's get another precept. Ezekiel 12, I believe. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 22 Son of man which is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth because this is what they believe they believe that this vision these prophecies are going to fail not a single one of these prophecies are going to fail not a single vision in the scriptures is going to fail not a single thing what we have been prophesying in the name of our Savior Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah through the powers of the Holy Spirit, it's going to fail. Tell them therefore, this is all we're doing, we're just telling you what's coming. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, power, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall be no more any vain vision, nor flattering dip, divination within the house of Israel for I am the Lord Yahweh I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass it shall be no more prolonged in your days O rebellious house will I say the word O rebellious house will I say the word and will perform it says the Lord power Yahweh. Again, 
the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Go back to you know, precept. No, no, let's go back to Second Peter. That's that's fine. We've had three beautiful precepts there that's given us understanding that none of these words, this vision, shall not return back to the most high. Void. None. So, verse 9 again. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward to Israel. Long suffering is seeing our suffering. He's long suffering himself, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Only the one third, the elect, the elect of the house of Israel, the chosen, including the 144,000, are going to come to repentance. Not all of Israel. Only the one third is going to be delivered out of the destruction. So, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, as we all know. Not even Yahweh shall know the day that the Most High is going to get the angel to blow the seventh trumpet to summon him to say, game on. It's going to come as a thief in the night. Even to us that are in the truth, it's going to come as a thief in the night. Except we're going to be prepared. Part of the day of the Lord is the destruction. So the, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In that which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So it says here, and the elements shall melt with fever and heat. What's that fever and heat? That fever and heat is the nuclear destruction. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. What's going to cause that is the nuclear destruction. Right? The word fever, let's quickly look it up. Does it mean anything else than what we think it means, right? The elements shall melt. The elements, let's put the word the elements. And the elements, stoichion. Strong's G, 4747, Stoichion. 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 The elements, the rudiments, primary and fundamental principles of any art, science, or discipline. All right? Any first thing, any first thing from which the others belonging to some series or composite whole take their rise. An element, first principle. So we have, they call it the, the table of elements. Everything that's on this earth, table of elements, is made up of elements. And we have it, they call it the table of elements, right? So these are the elements that makes up what we see on the earth. They call it, that's it, the, the, the periodic table. That's what it's called. Periodic table of elements. All right? So... Everything is made up from the periodic table of elements. So the elements that make up everything that's on the earth is going to be melted by fever and heat, which is going to be caused by the nuclear missiles. All right? So it says here, any first thing from which the others belonging to some series or composite whole take their rise, an element first principle. The elements from which all things have come, the material causes of the universe. So there's your periodic table, showing the elements of all the things that we know of that makes up everything that we know of on the earth, that we know about. There's obviously going to be some things that we don't know about. So, that's the elements. Uh, we want to look at the other word, what was it? Favorite heat. And the elements shall melt with fever and heat. Kosao. Strong's G, 2741. Kausao. 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 So you see that? To burn up, set fire to, to suffer with feverish burning, be parched with fever. So we know it's talking about to burn up and to set fire to. 
because this is what the nuclear missiles are going to do. They're going to set fire to. They're going to burn up. So it says, but the elements, the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Let's quick look at what it says there for a great noise. I'm just interested. With a loud noise. Well, that's what the nuclear missiles are going to do. It's going to be a loud noise. As we all saw in, in the animation. And shall melt with what? And the elements shall pass away with great noise. And the elements shall melt with fever and heat. And the earth and also the works. And that therein shall be burnt up. Does that mean anything different? Burnt up. Katake. Strong's G twenty six eighteen. Katakayo. 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 <laughs> I got that one right wrong, didn't I? Katakayo. To burn up. To hear that? To consume by fire. So let's just go through. So, so it says here. Seeing then. So seeing then now, now you know these things, right? That all these things shall be dissolved. Everything's going to be dissolved from the nuclear destruction. That's going to be hit by nuclear missiles. Not the whole world, just the cities and the places. America's going to be wiped off the place, the, the, the planet. It's going to be totally dissolved by fever and heat. Israel is going to be purified by nuclear fire and the fire from the chariots. America is going to be totally destroyed by nuclear fire and the fire from the Lord's chariots from the angels. So seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in in all holy conversation and godliness? So what manner of person do you need to be in? For you to understand from reading 2 Peter chapter 3 that this is talking about a nuclear war that's going to take place on the coming day of the Lord. What manner of persons are you to truly be in? I mean... How hard is it truly for anyone to see and understand this? In all conversation and, glad and godliness, that's the manner that we need to be in Israel. For those of you who truly understand what we are teaching and prophesying in the Bible. What manners of persons ought you to be in? In a whole, holy conversation and godliness. Repent and convert and come back to your heritage like I keep saying. It's all about coming back to your true heritage and having your faith. Your faith in your house shy. Your fringes can't save you. Just so you know, those guys that keep going on about their fringes are going to save them. And the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. The Lord can't save you. The Lord just plays a part in your salvation. I keep saying this. The Lord is, is just a schoolmaster. It's your schoolmaster to your house shy. It makes you do the right things. It's the schoolmaster. It's what teaches you to get closer to your house shy. And then your faith gets stronger. So, verse 12. It says, looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Most High. So this is what they're meant to be looking for, the churches. All of these so-called Christians that call themselves Christians should be looking for and hasten for the coming of the day of the Most High. Yeah, how are the powers? But they don't because they understand. Because, they, because for those that know that day is going to be a terrible, destructive day. <laughs> and then you've got those that just... They don't, they don't, they're not looking for that day. They're not looking for that day at all. They want to continue building their, their treasures up on earth here. Enjoying the luxuries of Babylon the Great. Enjoying the luxuries of what we call the New World Order. The reincarnation of the Roman Empire. Living in this neoliberal world. They don't want the Lord to come. Because those, those of them that understand that that day is going to be a dark and terrible day of destruction and judgment. They're terrified. But those of us that are of Israel, those that truly believe in the scriptures, that truly believe in Yahweh Shai, we call ourselves the hopeful elect. We pray that we're delivered out of this destruction that's coming. So we call ourselves the hopeful elect, the hopeful chosen. We are looking for that day to come every day. Every night we go to bed, we pray it's the next day. We pray that the nations have gone to war. We pray that the, uh, a 9-11 event has happened to push out the... The, the, mic, the, the microchip, which is the, micro, the mark of the beast on a global scale. We pray that something happens overnight. We get up in the morning and everything has changed. Bringing us closer to salvation. To the kingdom of heaven coming to earth. Bringing us closer to the, 
to the day that we will receive immortality, spiritual powers, rulership, judgment. Bring us close to that day that we can take our vengeance and recompense on all the nations that played a part in our destruction and captivity. Those that truly believe in the scriptures that are of the house of Israel, we are looking forward to that day. So you should be looking for and hasten unto the coming of the day of the Most High, the powers. We're in what? We're in the heavens, the skies above, the atmosphere above, being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fever and heat, says it again. What's going to cause these things to dissolve and the elements to melt with fever and heat? What's going to cause these things? The destruction, the nuclear war. I mean, how hard is it? We have a preset here. I'm just quickly from the Bible here. A second family, so lucky. Like Isaiah, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. Just kind of Isaiah 24, right? Uh, what is that? Let's see. There it is. Isaiah 24, verse 3. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For who? For the Lord Yahweh has spoken his this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haunted people of the earth do languish. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinances and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, listen carefully, therefore has the curse devoured the earth. What's the curse? The intercontinental ballistic missiles, the nuclear war. That's the curse. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. I mean, I don't know what, what it is you can't see. You see, when they see this, it says a new heaven and a new earth. That's the rulership. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it. That follow us. This is what the new heaven and the new earth is. That's what the second death is. The second death, if we go to... Let's quickly get this follow here. Uh, Revelations 20. Is it Revelations 20 I read? I think it's Revelations 20. Um, just make sure. Yeah. Revelations 20 verse 6. This is what this is talking about. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is what? It's the deliverance. It's the salvation. That's the salvation. That's going to be delivered out of the destruction. Why? On the second death, which is the nuclear destruction, has no power, but they shall be priests of the Most High and of Yahweh Shai, and shall what? And shall reign with him a thousand years. 
That's the thousand years that Esau is going to go into captivity. That's the thousand years of slavery for the Edomites. That's what's so significant about the thousand years. That's the thousand years of slavery for the Edomites. The second death is the nuclear destruction, is the nuclear fire. Here. We start at verse 7. Revelation 21 and verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, which is the, which is the kingdom, the rulership, the spiritual powers, immortality. And I will be his power, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all the liars shall have their part in what in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the nuclear destruction the nuclear war which is what which is the second death that's what the second death is the second death is the nuclear destruction just so you understand I just want to get that clear get those two precepts out of the way so the new heavens and new earth is going to come about from the second death from the nuclear war, from the destruction, from the coming of our Lord Yahweh and the angels and the chariots when they deliver the elect out of the destruction. The brimstone and fire is from the nuclear destruction. America is going to become a lake of brimstone and fire because all of America is going to be destroyed. Israel is going to become a lake of brimstone and fire because all of Israel is going to be destroyed except Israel, which is part of the promised land, is going to be replenished because it has to be purified through the second death through fire that's why the world is reserved unto fire we read that earlier right when the lord when the lord said that where is it here when he says but the heavens and the earth which are now which we're living in today by the same word are kept in store it's kept in store it's been put aside Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. And we know there's pure wickedness going on in Israel, just like there is going on in America. And I always say this, in Israel they have the, the biggest LGBTQ festival in the world is held in Israel today. But yet people want to believe that those devils are the children of, of the children of Israel. Come on, man. So anyway, so we was here, all right, verse 12. It says, looking for and hasten to the coming to the day of, the, of our power, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire, because heavens, we're going to see the fires going up into the heavens, into the sky, into the atmosphere, into the ozone, and the mushroom clouds, shall be dissolved. It's going to be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fever and heat. What's the elements? We read out earlier what the elements are, right? The elements are all of, sorry. The elements are everything we see on this periodic table that makes up your buildings, your cars, your houses, your roads, you know, your, your shopping malls, your leisure centers, your theaters, your cinemas, which are going to be dissolved by fever and heat, which is the destruction, which what we saw in the animation earlier. Those are the elements that make up all the things that we've, everything that's made up on this earth. Every city that's going to be hit by nuclear missiles, those elements are going to be dissolved. Remember, America is not only place going to be here, other places are going to be here as well. Just America is going to be totally wiped off the face of the earth and never inhabited again. It says, wherefore, oh sorry, where was that? I jumped a verse. So it says, nevertheless, it says, never, nevertheless we, nevertheless we, according to his promise, Yahweh Shai's promise, the Most High's promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, which is the rulership, wherein dwelleth righteousness. So the new heavens and the new earth, it just goes back to 2nd Ezra's. Let me just quickly put it up. This was never meant to be this long, but I'm just going to go with the Spirit. 2nd Ezra chapter 6. This is the new heavens and the new earth. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the new heavens and new earth is going to come through Jacob, through Israel, through the elect. The end of the world is Esau, which is the so-called white man. The Edomites, the end of their rulership, their power structure, their Satanism, their wickedness, their hypocrisy, their deception, their lies. It's all going to come to an end. 
through this war, through the war of Armageddon, through the coming of our Lord on that same day, when all hell breaks loose. So it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Jacob is the beginning of the world. That's the righteousness coming through Jacob, Israel. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. So we just rehearsed the righteous acts while we're in captivity, because the law can't save you. We just rehearsed them, can't save you. Salvation is going to come through your faith. Ultimately, you would have to be chosen before the foundation of the earth. It tells you in is it the book of Ephesians. Hold on. Let's see, I always do this. Ephesians. Yeah, here it is. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me just quickly bring it up. So in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, it says, because first I want to go straight to the point. Start here, verse 9. It says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time he might gather together in one all things in Yahushai, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. So to obtain that inheritance is being predestinated. And if we go up a few verses, I might have even jumped the gun a bit here. Shall lucky. Let me start here. It says, Blessed be the Most High and Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, the Anointed, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Yahweh Shai, accordingly as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So, the elect were chosen before the foundation of the world, just so you understand. So, it's already decided, we don't know, but we, it doesn't mean we're going to sit around idle, you know, they say idle hands of the devil's playground. No, we're going to do the work, boy, in, tr in good faith, and pray that we are one of those chosen, simple as. So, a couple more verses. Where was we? So it says here, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is what? Salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. Simple as that. So I'm just going to finish it there. Like I said, for those of you that still believe that this nuclear war is not part of prophecy in the Bible, the destruction, the judgment, the war of Armageddon, the day of the Lord, the coming day of the Lord, is the coming day of the Lord is the nuclear war, the war of Armageddon. It's also the day of salvation, the deliverance of the children of Israel, of the elect who was chosen, predestined before even the world was created. Simple as that. So, I pray you are edified by today's edification. As I said, we give all praises and glory. Rakatehawah, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash.
giving praises to the Most High, Yahweh, He is, Vahasham in the name, Yahweh Shai, the Deliverer, Vahasham in the name, Rakah, Kodash, the Holy Spirit, We're giving praises in the Paleo Hebrew language of our far forefathers, and Shalom to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone, who are leading this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all of you brothers and sisters out there who are edified by this truth. I hope you are edified by today's edification. Shalom, shalom.